can everybody see my screen now? Wellen? Yep, I, I see uh, some clouds. Okay. How about yep, now? I, yeah, I see a slice. Okay, uh, let me you. start the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wellen. Thank you for everybody coming in today to join these sessions. Uh, my name is Sean Cho, and I will. Uh, I was a former uh, head of the U.S. design at Zara Groups, and uh, I had been working with Alibaba corporates for uh, almost seven years. And nowadays, I currently I'm taking a break. I'm taking on the vacations, but uh, the main purpose of doing so is to uh, give it back to the community. Actually, I want to share my experience and my uh, know-how uh, to the e-commerce and also the design uh, communities and wish that uh, can, could inspire all of you uh, in the future. So uh, today uh, I'm going to share about how we, uh, how the design teams to uh, drive the traffic on the product and how we think. And uh, uh, today we're going to cover the, the uh, definition of the convergence from design perspective and how we use the design framework for the product conversions and also share you some of the cases to describe our design approach and also our, our uh, design uh, making uh, philosophies. So at the beginning, uh, I wanna share some of the thoughts of design thinking. So probably you've ever heard of these terms, uh, uh, not only uh, in the business group, uh, not only in the design organizations, but also uh, often being discussed in the business organization as well. It's a methodology, so the OSA is a process to help the uh, business organizations to do the problem solving or to do the innovation. So basically, when we see the uh, e-commerce, we see three parts, right? Uh, one part is consumers from consumer side. and the other part is seller part and designer is in the, in the between all product managers in the between. How do we help both? Uh, so from consumer point of view, consumers care about functional and convenient and what next, right? To increase this value. But for the sellers, for our merchants, the main purpose is for them to do their business better, to sell more products, to get more profit. So when we design things in between, when we design the product, we have to see the values of the consumers and also the business values for our sellers. So it's not a, a just one way, you know. Uh, uh, sometimes we have a very biased point of view that when we design the consumer products, we did lots of the user research only on the consumer side. So we basically knowing all the consumers what they need, but we hardly to consider what sellers can provide. So. A, it's like a spiral going up. It's like a spiral going up. So when we do the e-commerce platform, it's not only considering for the consumer side, but also we have to consider the mechanisms and also the process to help the seller side to provide a service better to the consumer. So we call this people, business, and also design, and we hope to synchronize them all and to come up with a better UX and add a value to the business. So what is the conversion? Let's talk about the definitions of the conversion. Actually, I don't want to get into very complicated uh, methodology or terms. So basically when the uh, design team to see the conversion, we see the product metrics and also business metrics. Uh, so if you are from the operation side, most of the time you will care about the business metrics. And, but if you are designing the product, uh, what is most important KPI, key performance index is DAU. So when we see the product metrics, retention is a key, right? So DAU uh, means daily active users, number of the users who use app or service every day. And then we will look at the stickiness, means loyalty, right? So the D, this is like a how long or, or how often how often our users gonna come back to our platform or service or, or our stores to purchase our product to or to use our service and, and the product feature. And the business is very important for the business, uh, for the for the e-commerce, right? Uh, we measure as a G, GMV as in the platform. GMV means gross merchants values, means how many transactions, uh, how many transactions multiplies AOV average order values on the platform. This is GMV. 
but for the uh, sellers, they care about how many transactions and also order values, right? So it's also these these things together. But it, the, you, you probably, uh, probably you don't see the GMB as a platform. This uh, this uh, we call it automatic uh, result or uh, re, uh, KPI in business metrics. But uh, we just want I just want to mention that for the product we measure DAU, MAU, and for for the thickness. And the other one business is for the GMV. But oftenly for the product team, we consider GMV its end result. I just mentioned it earlier. It's an end result. It's an automated result drive by the process. We do it well on the product or service. We serve it well, and it will automatically lead to the end result. Means that we're gonna get better GMV. Why is that? Because if you want to change, uh, you want to generate more transactions uh, for for the orders. That means that you need to have more users. It's just simple math, right? If you drive more users to the platform, that means you guarantee you're going to have a more higher probability. Of course, we just do a simple math, but lots of factors gonna affect that users going to buy it or not. I'm going to explain that later. But at least if we calculate this only simple formula without any factors effects. So the more users coming into your platform, to your store, equally uh, equals to the more transactions you're gonna get. And more transactions you're gonna get, uh, if you can really raise your margins of the product or profit of the product, and actually you will get more AOV, right? Average order value. If you do it operations well, uh, then you will end up to getting better business metrics. So this is more we calculate as a end result metrics, not exactly the process we're gonna drive from design perspective. So uh, what kind of method, uh, methods that we are really using for the, for the uh, uh, driving the conversion? Uh, you can easily to search on the Google or other places uh, this is called IDA model. IDA model is often used as a marketing uh, strategy, a marketing funnels for a driving conversion. So metrics are goal, but how do we reach this goal? Is simply we just look at this funnel. The first things we do for the marketing is to raise up the awareness for the, our consumer, right? Our consumers outside, and we're gonna drive their attention to the platform or to a service or to our store or to our product. Uh, first thing is to raise up their awareness. And the second, when they come into our store or to see our product, we want to raise up the attentions and also interest from the consumers. Uh, this, this time probably we call it users. Users to raise their interest on our product. And then they start to have an interest. They pay attention to our product, uh, skills or, or uh, assortment. Then we use different methods to raise up their desire. You know, most of time, our traffic or our transaction driven by the uh, impulsive behavior changes, right? That's the purpose of advertisement, promotions, or other operation methods like vouchers or like a discounts, all those things to raise up the desire for uh, uh, changing behavior, uh, changing users' behavior to convert uh, their transaction. And then we hope that or oh, uh, raise, raising up this desire, raising up this uh, conversion effects going to lead to the user's actions, to click on the buttons, to uh, put their, their uh, put the assortment, uh, put the product into the car, and then lead to the business transaction. But this item model specifically use, uh, it just simply describes how marketing driving the conversion. But uh, as a platforms, like Zada or like Alibaba, Taobao, Timo, uh, we are like a motherships of the products. So it's not like a single product, like only B2C on it. Actually, it's a, it's a fla flagship uh, app, or we call it a uh, giant app uh, to serve all the products. So basically, if you come to Zada, you can see lots of product features on Zada. Not only just one, right? You can see flash sale, that's a promotion product. You can see uh, recommended for you. Uh, you can see uh, the voucher. That's one of the products as well. So even though you come to our website at the first page, at the homepage, you already uh, see lots of products 
all product features on the on the home page so uh, with this mix uh, product features or very complex complex platform uh, mechanism we couldn't just simply use this uh, method so we come up the product design teams come up our own methods for Lazada converging funnel uh, we try to describe this simple as well so uh, when the users come when they land to our page, the first thing what the first thing they will do is browse, right? So they will start to browse whether they just came here by accidentally, you know, accidentally, or they came to here on purpose. They can the the users already been loyal, so they come to our uh, product our data platforms all the time, or they just seen some of the commercials outside, see some of the vouchers that shares outside, and they come here. The first thing they want to do is to figure out what's going on on the product. So user land on the homepage and start to look for the information that we want to provide. And the second one, sorry, uh, uh, sorry. So what we have to distinguish for the users, uh, usually we kind of uh, doing their persona. Or we just separate that into three categories. One is the directly shoppers. So for the first type of the users of uh, direct shoppers, they already know what to buy. So for example, I want to buy TV. So I come to the other website, simply I just use search engine and then I tap type TV. Then I will go to the uh, search engine result page and see whatever the recommendation engine or search engine provide to me for the list. And then I will select whatever the uh, brands that I want. Or even, the, even, uh, even if I just search the brand directly right i want a sony tv then i just sony 42 inch tv on the search engine box so usually they would just use search engines or categories right category you check you can simply just uh, uh select the consumer electronics so this is the direct shopper the first type of the user and the second type of the user is explorer it does uh, explorer they might be attracted by the some of the promotion or advertisement uh, we send it outside or store manager send it outside and they came to our platforms to complete their deals or they are curious about the uh, offers that we provide so their attitude actually open-minded because they already as accepted this uh, advertisement or this promotion but they still not completely buy in everything that we uh, we provide the information yet so they will be very impatient that to see or to depends on whatever these platforms going to offer to them so by catching their eyeball in this step or this type of the user is very important when they land on our pages and the consistency between the outside information external information and the platform information has to be consistent Otherwise, when they come to our, our platform by clicking some of the uh, specific advertisement and they come to our website, they come to our uh, product or they come to our uh, store, they couldn't find the information. It's easy to, for them to get lost and they will probably just uh, bounce off. And the third type is engaging customers. Uh, this kind of customers already been uh, ch transformed or converted into our loyal you know users so usually they will uh, expect different things to see different things because probably they come every day to check out new things so what information we provide should be sufficient sufficient uh, for them to make decision quickly without feeling lost so by this kind of user we provide more assortments more choices more of the supply uh, the products to them they will feel more engaging And the second funnel is guide. So like uh, I just uh, described, when they start to browse, what can we guide them? So we have to uh, identify their intention. So the platform should provide the directions for them to go. So when the first two types of the users cannot be satisfied with the merchandise or deals, they uh, should be guided to be able to explore alternative, right? So when they couldn't see exactly the product they want, for example, they want to buy the Adidas shoes, but when they come, they couldn't find the models or the, the, the preference colors and types they want. And by this moment, the platform or product 
or the store should provide them the alternative. So they wouldn't get lost. They wouldn't just jump off. And also, usually it refers to the converting actions like add to product to cart. So uh, call to action buttons, or uh, it's also the guide to uh, have uh, our users to make uh, actions. So because we provide this guide, it comes to the users who have to interact with our platform. So add to car methods and also call to action, collect the but, uh, collect vouchers or uh, choose the right product or even though we provide the live streaming and, and the instant message that users can chat with the sellers, chat, chat with the merchants. Uh, this kind of interaction products has to be there so when the guided methods didn't provide, doesn't provide the very sufficient information, uh, the user still feels that uh, someone or somehow the platform or the service still accomplish, accompany them to accomplish, accomplish their, their missions, their, their, their intentions. And the fourth part is called, called convert. So users make meaningful actions which lead to our business or product goal. Uh, BAU, GMV, etc. But we don't measure only single action to justify the conversion. As for uh, daily active user index, actually uh, the convert has to be repeatable. So otherwise, you know, the users only come here and add to car and um, make a purchase once and they wouldn't come back. It wouldn't uh, to be good, right? So when we talk about converts, not only uh, successfully converts for one actions, add to car actions or payment actions, but we usually talking about how do we convert these users in becoming our customers. So designing mechanism is very important that allow our users to come back all the time. So how do we design framework to match up this conversion funnel? So by browsing par, actually we have to establish in the communication, we call it brand. So when we deal with users on the browsing stage, it is so important we communicate uh, what image we want users to uh, convey or give the right offers, what users may expect for quickly conversion or quickly de uh, decision making. Establishing the communication is a key strategy for design, uh, designers here especially on the small mobile uh, screen, because uh, if you see the other on the mobile screen, it's very crowded, very busy. So how do we establish the communication at the first sight that our users clearly understand what kind of offers that you, uh, the platform or the product is going to offer? It's essential and it's very important, it's a key. We need to address clear information. Next, when the users start to get less interest whatever the platform uh, provide or with low intention to convert on the browsing stage. Our strategy should increase the user's intention and uh, to stay or to increase user's curiosity to explore more. I mentioned it before, uh, this part, we need to uh, provide an alternative for users to do more things. So guide step is to have more alternative pathway uh, pathways so that users can have a choices and also can let us uh, to have more time to communicate with our uh, consumers or users. And then it comes to the component design level. So uh, mainly we focus on efficiency. So like call to action buttons, uh, which should be clear and also lead users to convert quickly. But furthermore, we should consider UI components uh, can be also leveraged as a persuasive uh, design as well, persuasive components as well. I will give you an example later. Uh, later, I'm going to use some of the uh, cases study. Uh, the less, less mind building uh, using mechanism when we talk about convert. Uh, usually, we only consider click or purchase, this kind of a simple action. But to be able to convert users to regular returning customer relies on how we design product mechanism. Otherwise, the design only can affect either, uh, only single purchase. I just mentioned it earlier. And what do we do about brand, brand part, established communication part? Uh, the important guideline is first screen efficiency. So like I say, 
the mobile screen is pretty small. And we have to really catch the eyeball on the first screen. So as you can see, the first screen, usually we do lots of promotion and we put most important uh, uh, promotion modules, promotion uh, mechanisms on the first screen. So, and then we need to have a clear module segmentation. So what do we provide for the first one? As you can see the homepage here, the structure design, we separate the main part of the structure, the header. So you can see we provide the main navigation here to let our user know, oh, different region, we might provide the different uh, navigations because uh, user's preference in different uh, countries. So the header is for users, like I say, the first type of users, they can simply use the uh, uh, direct uh, search engine or use the navigation category to find their product or find the product they want directly. And the second part is the body, right? A body usually is the secondary uh, importance, mesh information or alternatives that we want to provide to our users. So for example, the promotion mechanism like flash sale, most popular and, and this part we try to, or even sometimes we have uh, our uh, campaigns here at the second, uh, I would say still first screen, but uh, almost scrolling to the second screen. So the second uh, important part is for this important mechanism for our uh, users when they, the second part, of, uh, second personas we call explorer, when they are not interested in the direct usage, they can find something they are interested in that part. So you can see the body here. We provide a uh, lot of the, uh, you can see my cursor. I try to put my cursor here. Anyway, you, you, you can see our SKU part, assortment part. You can see the uh, discount there. And also how many product has been sold. This type of the mechanism is to catch uh, users intention and also uh, try to catch their uh, conversion, those kind, those kind of impulsive behavior, let them convert as soon as possible uh, from the homepage to the next step. And the third part is a uh, guideline is consistent symbolization. So for brand or value proposition that we try to communicate when we uh, design interface, we are not only consider single page, but the consistent communication across platform. I give you one example. This is our free shipping. So when you see the home page, we have a recommendation and for our users, they can easily identify free shipping icons here. So they know this product or this assortment provide the uh, free shipping mechanism but they might not interested in this or they want also want to see more details about this product so when they click on this product uh, they will come to the right side as a pdp we call product detail page as well so we carry over this free shipping symbolism or we call it branding over to the product uh, detail page so the user wouldn't get lost. So the, for their consistent mind, they always know that, oh, this product, the intention of this product is to provide me free shipping mechanism, free shipping promotion to me. So uh, by staying all the uh, uh, consumer journey flow, uh, the consistency, we provide the consistency of the branding, the user wouldn't get lost. Some of the platform, they only put down the icons there and uh, the user come to check on the icon for the free shipping, but when they come to the PTP or other pages or even interaction pages, I am, they will simply just get lost because, you know, when you communicate for a long time with the platform, you might, uh, the user might already forget what's the uh, beginning decision making factors they come to here. So we will lose the, the, the uh, intention or the mechanism that we really can drive the conversions from, from original purpose. And the second part is content. Uh, content, actually, when we talk about content, it, because it's more than just a UI component. UI components that we mentioned is about uh, the icons, the buttons, the layout, or the colors, right? But actually, when we design a UI, 
it's not only for this. Also, how we write down the text descriptions for the product is also important. Everybody knows about that. But recently, actually use rich media to make product more appealing. It become a trend and also really can drive the conversion of the product. Uh, especially right nowadays, technology evolved, right? 4G, 5Gs, and it's not a problem to stream in the, the media so easily. So how to leverage this content richness is also the considerations for the product features to provide more appealing uh, features to our consumers. So this is the uh, mechanism that we use it in the Alibaba uh, uh, platform. And actually we have a uh, artificial intelligent designers to help our sellers to combine all the content together. At first, they analyze the product descriptions uh, pages and understand what type of the persona, what type of the users, what, what are their preference to see the video and the contents they want to, uh, they, uh, they, they would simply uh, convert their, their behavior. So the machines will generate the video by combining those content together. And this is example we use on the Tmall. Actually, by providing the product image and the difference, the other part, the, by comparison, we provide the video the add to cart conversion raised up 18% and the product sharing rate actually raised up 40%. And we, uh, as another part of the Alibaba group, actually we are trying to leverage this technology from a corporate to the other side. So soon, soon everybody will enjoy the tools at our uh, commercial operation platform and mission platform to have our merchants using this kind of artificial intelligence to generate the video. If some of the uh, sellers, actually they are small sellers, so they don't have the resources to uh, hire the good designers or good video editors to do this. And machine can do this. And, and so it's easy. Although the, uh, hiring the human editors, video editors, might uh, be able to do more of the customizations and, and what we need. But as I just mentioned, not all the merchants, all, all the sellers has this kind of financial capability. So we provide these tool, uh, tools just simply, uh, just help the consumers, to, uh, merchants to do this job easier. So we can see how content, rich contents help the conversion. And the other parts, we need to tell users what they can have before they want it, right? So as we know that consumers usually make decisions based on what their experience and also their memories are, but they cannot predict what they might also want based on their experience and memories, which means that sometimes the promotions is also important. And using the rich media to do the promotion, it, it's also the very good tools to drive, uh, even though the user doesn't know they want it, uh, they want this product at this moment. So those kind of impulsive behavior changes, uh, I mentioned, it's more of the consumer psychology part. Uh, we can use leverage the rich media to do so. So uh, by putting the live streaming, we put lots of brain communications on the live streaming uh, interface as well. You can see the exclusive prices, and also we put a voucher there uh, on the live streaming. So while they are watching the live streaming, while they are watching our uh, KOL or the state uh, uh, store owners to promote their products, immediately our interface already can provide the vouchers to help the users to make decisions sooner. Or like a flash sale uh, mechanism on the campaign, uh, campaign period and to help the users have more interactions and to gain more of the interest and also the promotion values on this part as well. And engaging and inter interactive. Uh, when we design the rich contents, another design principle is to provide this with live streaming interface. The way of selling things is different than the traditional pages. It can provide in instant effects and also sense of urgency easily. And I want to provide one of the uh, KOL example here. This is uh, this this guy is called Li Jiaqi. Uh, it's a Taobao influencer. Uh, he's a top influencer on Taobao live streaming. Uh, on the 2000, uh, double 11, 2018, he's, he sold uh, 15,000 lipstick 
in 15 minutes by trying the lipstick on the live stream. And uh, now along uh, the next year at our uh, June 18 campaign, he also sold a uh, 5,000 units Shiseido skincare in three minutes. So how this guy, Li Jiaqi, used the method to promote the product, to get engage, engagement and also interest from users. He uses lots of terms like, oh my God, uh, total 2,000 units, 100 left, countdown, three, two, one. Like this kind of the conversation, this kind of way of speaking to attract users. Similar to our product, maybe we don't have a very strong influencer helping us. Maybe we can have a good influence. Also, uh, yeah, Lada also provide the collaboration systems, collaboration models for, for our merchants to collaborate with good influencer. But what if you don't have one and you have to do the live streaming by yourself? Of course, product side can help as well. So this is one example provided to, uh, almost two years ago, I think, it, it, between our double 11, in our double 11 time, we provide gasset uh, mechanism. So gasset mechanism also creating the gamifications on the live streaming to let users feel a sense of urgency, feel a sense of the uh, engagement and also interested, interest. So they can really play games, interact with the, with the uh, live streaming interface directly. So the data also provide, we also design this kind of the uh, mechanism to help the sellers or the live streamers when they don't have a very, very good sense of talking, communications, and these tools also can help. So of course, I don't provide the exact numbers, but actually what's durations, uh, for the live streaming, also interaction rates are uplifted by this kind of mechanism as well. And then increase the content quality. Uh, as a design team, we are not only design the interface, but also how do we guarantee the content quality we provide on our uh, platform. So lots of users come to our pl product, they don't want to see very vague and foggy, fuzzy, uh, product images on site, right? So actually for the design team, we need to provide lots of the guidelines for our sellers, merchants, and our customers, uh, clients to provide a better uh, product images or live streaming uh, covers. So this is one of the examples that we provide the guideline. Uh, so our sellers, our merchants can follow our guideline to provide good cover image, good uh, product image, and also they know what to drive better convergence of the images and product and live streaming uh, videos. So increasing the content quality is also key, uh, key actions or like a key principles for the design team to provide to our merchants as well. And the third part is coming to the components part. So uh, as we know, the products uh, consistence of uh, consists of all the modules together. So basic is the UI components and layouts and the colors, text fonts, typographics, all those things together. So follow call to action design principle. It's a key that when we design and what exactly is the uh, call to action principle. Call to action need to be functional. This is basic line. Functional means that what do you want users to do? So when you put down the buttons like a, a buy now or add to car at the bottom of the screen, actually this is functional buttons, functional call to actions. It, it directly tell users that what I want you to do. I, when you come to the product detail page, the two actions, two main actions I want you to do is add to car, add this item to car, or you can purchase now. Oh, so that's the main actions that we want the users to do at this moment. But also for the call to action, we can also provide a hook. Hook means to uh, lure up the user's curiosity to make action changes. So the right side, let's look at the right side images. We can see this uh, area, circle area, say uh, during the campaign, actually this is today only uh, Singapore $200 off, right? So we provide a hook, we provide a curiosity, we provide a promotional intention here to drive users convert. 
So it's not only functional like a uh, add to car or purchase or click now, this kind of call to action terms, but also we can use those kind of intentional, promotional uh, terms to lure our users to uh, make their behavior changes. And the third part we often use is notification, right? So we also have a notification systems to help our uh, products to promote, uh, even though the users are not on our platform yet. So notification also triggers users' obsessions uh, to have the actions. So uh, second part for the uh, principle of the UI component is effective wording and persuasive elements. The case I just mentioned earlier on the right side, right? Put down the right wording. It's very important to persuade our users to have their behavior changes. So this is flash sell example. So flash sell is one of the other operational mechanisms to promote products. It provides better deals products for consumers. So as we mentioned in the branding, branding sessions, right? Uh, we create a brand IP uh, to build up the constant mindset for our user, for our consumers. When they come to our platform, they know the first sections would be always some good deals. So the, when they come to our website, they know the first sections of the product is the good deals that this platform want to provide to our consumers. So under this, we also provide a sense of urgency, wordings uh, or for the purchasing on here. As you can see, the countdown, uh, countdown elements and also the discounted tax, right? And also the urgency of the burning, how many, how many items already been sold, how many left. Lots of the, the wording urgency mechanism, we can put it here. And also we provide the, the time timetable for users knowing what is when it's going to happen for the next next sales so users will come back all the time to drive the retentions uh, retention rate and the next part is layout and the composition uh, why is this matter i just want to use the example we test out earlier uh, as a promoter or operators, we all know that uh, designing the banner is, is, is essential, but somehow we always don't know how to design it. Actually, because we have lots of data, we train data uh, and become an artificial intelligent uh, machine, machine to do the banner for us as well. So we did lots of the tests on the banner design. Uh, this is one of the example. Uh, with a comparison between three types of the designs. So as you can see, we provide A, B, C, three, three design to test out the conversion here. So as you can see, actually the conversion rate A type is better than the B type. And the B type of the design actually is better than the, uh, the, the C type. So we, we, we can understand the A type, the clean images providing the simple text and also the promotion clear, uh, drive more of the conversions than the, the one with lots of the components. But is this a result that, you know, applying to all the scenario is not necessary because like I mentioned before, sometimes this is functional, right? Driving the conversion, but building up the brand is also uh, as part of the com uh, conversation, as part of the consideration as well. So it's not a simple, simple decision factors. So we all have to see overall uh, all the information and insights we have and the purpose of our design, purpose of our business to make this decision. But I just use this example to show you, uh, even though the simple design uh, components can make big difference for the conversion. And the fourth part, fourth guideline for the UI component is trust symbol and also provide the consistency. Okay, uh, a little bit late, I'm going to speed up. So we provide a minimum branding, it's called batch systems on our service as well. Uh, you, as you can see, uh, this is the examples on the search result page. So on the search result for the SKU, actually we provide lots of levels or we call it badge system here. And the 
uh, add to car actually increased 2.2%. And we increased the basic size uh, by 2.6 above items. Just simply, we provide this kind of a badge system. And the fourth part, when we come to mechanism, like I say, if we only want the users to convert once, okay, we just need to consider each pages. But actually, we want users to come back all the time. So providing a mechanism is very important. It's called providing a closed loop experience on our product. So we need to consider end-to-end -end flow and also increase the digital footprints of our users. When they have a digital footprint on, on, on the platform, it's, that we call it digital asset, right? So you have more digital asset, you are mostly unlikely to leave this platform. So increasing digital footprint and digital asset is also uh, very cru cru uh, crucial for our, our uh, retention. And also we provide fun and upgradable right, mechanism. So this is the example we use, right? As you come to Zada, you can see one of the mecha uh, mechanism we provide is code gamification. You can see the Zada game here. So this is uh, for our users to increase the digital footprint. So by coming back to play the game, to collect the, the coins, to collect the vouchers all the time. And the more vouchers or the, the more uh, coins they earn, uh, they are mostly likely to spend those times and also those values on our platform. So this uh, com conversations actually add to add values to the to the, our users and also add the values to our merchants as well. And because merchants has a more way to promote their products, not only just simply give the pro uh, product detail page the vouchers for users click, but you have more chance and more time to engage our users through this gamification uh, mechanism. Okay, uh, to summarize today's topic, actually uh, conversion regards of the product index or business index. And they are more like, uh, more like a result index rather than index of the design, designers or design. Uh, when we design, actually as described all the, pre all the principle and example uh, earlier, we probably raise, we are basically driving only one thing, user behavior change. So the key is to make user behavior change. So when we design product, regardless of architecture, layout, elements, colors, or wording, uh, we are not only design layout pages, avoiding uh, spending time on the detail page design. We try to build up the me mechanics, allow users to have a deeper relationship with platform, rather than just a checkout purchase. So, uh, providing this information or summarize for you is that when you trying to engage your users, not only building up the relationship of trading, but also building up the relationship with them with services and more deeper conversations on, on your service, on your stores is uh, very important. It definitely will increase the time users spend with you and with your product, with the service you provide. Okay, thank you. I think uh, I'm going to hand over to our host and it's a Q&A yep. session. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Sean, for, for, sure, for sharing information. Uh, let me see what questions do I have. Okay, we have one questions. Okay, the questions number one is, would think Lazada and Shopee competing and using channel selection on web or mobile affect customer purchase journey? Uh, the key of, I would say the main key purpose for the technology for Alibaba Group, entire corporate, even including the other, is to uh, really using the technologies, for example, uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, to have a better uh, algorithm to serve our consumer or our sellers better. So this is definitely our goal. And by providing, uh, by leveraging the technology, I think uh, uh, we have a very, very strong uh, competition here with, uh, uh, with Shopee. Uh, because we already have a lot of data uh, in hand and it's already been trained through the Alibaba group. So it's in progress. It's going to get better for, for the algorithm part and it's going to help the merchants and our sellers, our clients to provide a better service for our customer in, uh, in the future. 
Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, thank, thank you, John. Okay, so uh, let uh, so uh, I let me open up for another thirty seconds to see if there's any more questions. So anyone is asking any more questions uh, on the stream right now? So again, of course, I think really like the everyone hope everyone learns something about. Oh, another question that this is more. This is more. This is more personal. Is there any way to connect with Sean? Find me on the <laughs> LinkedIn. Always <laughs> <laughs> welcome to yeah. Find me on the LinkedIn. Okay, yeah, you can. So, so how how do how, how, so they can yes, find Sean? Sean, Sean? Yeah, yeah, so Sean, Sean Chu, Chu. Then you'll find him on LinkedIn. Okay. Right. Uh, any more any more questions? Let's 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 just hold it for another twenty seconds. Like, if anyone's interested to ask anything right now, regarding design and so how how design really affects the actual conversion itself. Okay, Emily Low has a question. What are the common problems that you face? I think I'll I'll, I'll presume the answer what you say we face is when. Like the actual, how do you actual visualize the actual problems when you actually design something, and how will actually it affect conversion? I think for uh, this is very obvious. I think for most of the consumer in these regions already can see the complexities of the of the product of the platform, right? So, what to put it on the uh, layout for users first sight? How we make how we make that decision? What to sacrifice? It's really, really, yeah, it, it, it's difficult for us to make that decision, right? Uh, why do we, why did we put flash cell, not put most popular on the top of the, 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 the screen? Why did we put the vouchers here? Well, why do we put the vouchers there? So this kind of decision making, because we have uh, so many stakeholders uh, serving different product domains, and everybody will fight for the territories to come up here. I think for if you are merchants, you will understand it's really hard to get on the screen, right? So winning those screens, the, the strategy, the guideline, uh, consider those back end is actually is more critical and also more important for designers to do, not just crafting, crafting beauty alone. So I would say the difficult, uh, difficulty is to make those decisions and based on uh, the uh, principles, the guidelines, the the strategies that that what are uh, what we are going to drive at this moment. All right, thank you, Sean. So I think let's answer another few more questions. So I think this is a very good question. So how long should a page be for it to be conversion effective? I think this is this is also a problem that we probably in Lazada yourself we also actually encounter. <laughs> how long should a page be actually? Uh. The interesting thing for the internet product is that we test user every day. So as long as your, your uh, product's online, you already know the result. So we will adjust it based on the, the result, uh, whether it's good and we want to boost it up better or it's bad and then we need to change our strategy. So it's, it's an iteration, quick iteration. It's evolving every day. Okay, it's evolving. So I think there's no model answer to how many, how long page, but it's really depending on really how how I think probably I think John answer answer is we really need you also need some data to justify how long. I would say <laughs> that uh, what the, the 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 originally answer is that we see it immediately. Mm -hmm. So when the product you you want to see the how convergence happen, right? So you get the answer immediately when as long as uh, as soon as your your product online. You 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 will know the answer. The B is better than A, or A is better than B. Immediately, then we really need to make the adjustment or make the decision making for the next term quickly based on that data. Yeah. So A B testing is very important in this situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember do your A B. Remember do your A B testing. All right. So, okay. Let's I answer. Also, sorry, I, I can add one of the uh, uh, reason here. Okay. Uh, because also someone asked about user research, so I, I can answer it by, by this uh, answering the same question as, as well. Actually, user keep changing. So user is so easy to get affected by the current situation. For example, right now pandemic, and they will raise their needs for some of the essential stuff, or the promotion from the trend for anything. 
So the mindset of users actually they are keeping keeping changing. So it's really important for us to keep our product and also A/B testing always constantly and doing lots of quick iterations on this. So it's not like uh, we have one of the guideline for all oh, for future for 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 like a long long time. It's not like that. We always has to based on the result, based on the strategy, and making changes, making the new strategy all the time. So on the internet, on the e-commerce side, data is the key of the success to help not only the platform, but also our merchants as well. All right, so yes, thank you, Sean. Again, so uh, let's go for very long questions. So to what extent has gamification helped to improve user retention and recurring usage? So what's the demographic that uh, gamification has the greatest impact from? And what is the, if like Shopee is also doing gamifications, what's the differentiation, differentiating value for Lazada's gamification? Uh, for the gamification part, uh, actually we already have our profile, user profile, right? Most of our users are uh, whether Shopee or us, uh, all around 30, you know, not more than 35, most of our users. And uh, uh, female and male, have 50-50 uh, female slightly over male on our platform. So by providing this gamification, uh, gamification, the the I think the key is to have a intention. You know, originally or like we say, we are the e-commerce platform. We are not a game platform. We are not a game, but we providing the the more of the interactions mechanism to make. Getting those promotion, getting those those uh, benefits with the interest rate. So by adding up those uh, digital footprint, or we call it digital assets, mm, like just like you saving the money in the bank, right? The more you save, the most unlikely you leave this bank. The same things. That's how we provide this kind of the mechanism, and how we compete with Shopee. I, I think uh, it's. We can not only just say in the game itself, right? Gamification is just simple. It's just that you do something. For example, you water in the plants and or you plant the trees. Those are not, those are just that moment's engagement and those, we always can change. We always can change game itself. But by providing entire recurrence mechanic, mechanism, you just mentioned it here, how we can really provide the consumptions of those coins and how we can find the good deals from the merchants providing similar and better service to our consumers and become the whole holistic service design. That's our key, not just you know, simple touch point. If it's single touch point, if you get more coins, uh, at the end, actually the user still couldn't find a good deals to, to, to spend those coins, right? So the strategies between Slada and Shopee would be we are competing the, the, the back end of the mechanism and, and assortment as well. So uh, Lada has a more of the capacity of all those logistics and everything. They, are not, they, they cannot, those kind of co-companies cannot be uh, isolated from this mechanism alone. So I think by competing with Shopee, we also providing this kind of entire end-to-end -end experience and touch point a uh, holistic point of view to enhance the gamification to stand out from our competitors. All right. So yeah, thank you, Sean, again. So we're going to last, less. I think, you know, they, we really, it's really, we have really different uh, attraction group. And then of course, different attraction groups requires different form of engagement and different form of gamifications and fun to, to, to actually make shopping interesting. So last question, let's do the last question today. So uh, any online resources that can be recommended that is applicable for SME businesses? Uh, so you sign up as a, uh, our backend platform for the seller side, actually will provide lots of operation tools. And maybe right now, still lots of stuff is still in a mature stage, but uh, we are, uh, spending lots of time trying to improve the product experience uh, better and better. So we, like I mentioned it, we have uh, lots of those kind of artificial intelligent designers and we hope that later on this uh, kind of helpers can help you to make your product detail page, to help you to make your uh, promotion pages, even the banners uh, 
uh, better have a better conversion. So these tools all on the our seller operation platform as well in the future. Uh, for uh, right now we have a sim uh, simple one already, right? You, you go there, uh, you can uh, use those, those uh, platform those tools to come up the good templates and everything. But we are enhancing those templates by learning from data which kind of templates is better uh, for users click. So we are still doing lots of the homework here and hope that we can improve our product and getting better better. We are training our uh, artificial intelligence as well. All right, so thank you. So on the last question for I have today. Again, thank you everyone for taking the time to actually come on to Friday's learning just to, just to end this session again. So this is the first episode of the Friday learnings. But, well, thank you everyone for joining in and I hope you keep a look out for next episode of Friday learnings and have a great weekend and goodbye. Okay, goodbye.